Welcome to Center of Light Radio, my goof. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. What a great day to be alive. I want to say thank you very much to my friend Rajesh. He gave me a beautiful piece of information. Kind of like a missing puzzle piece about something that transpired in my life a few weeks ago. It's beginning to make sense. And I'm grateful, truly. Almost bringing me to tears. Welcome everyone. Let's see who's here. I love acknowledging people. It's how we connect. It's how, as the title of this interview tonight, communicate with your heart happens. Mary Emelong, Maria Thompson. It's been a while since I've seen you girl in the forum. Hey Kelly. Hi Jennifer Ohm. Jennifer Ohm. She don't need a name. People just own when she walks by. Carl Welch, Randy Mike. What's up, brother? Trey McDowell, Kristen Davis, Dr. Steve Stone, Chris Bonnie, Melissa McElroy, Kara Hermanson Heath, Chloe Lavender, Deanie, Jessica Dugans, Duggins, Dugans, Duggins, Dugans. I say Duggins. And Madeline Newkirk. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Center of Light Radio. September 21st and 22nd. Four Points Spiritual Expo happening at the Agri Center here in Memphis, Tennessee. $20 for two days admission. $15 per day. Why not hang around a couple of days? If you're from out of town, road trip. I play music. Come see me on Friday night. Play music. Have fun. Sit at my table. We drink some beer or buy a pizza or whatever it is that floats your boat. Next morning, we wake up. We go have breakfast and we head out to the Spiritual Expo. Four Points Spiritual Expo put on by Victoria Smith of Circle of Chi. That's Circle of QI. Get on Facebook. Look it up for more information. Keynote speakers. Myself. I'm going to be a keynote speaker. Radical transformation, crossing the bridge to the soul. Dear Lord, I'm going to put you in a situation. If I can touch you, you are in trouble. <laughs> Meaning, if I touch you, things for you are going to shift because I'm going to push you off the cliff, so to speak. Crossing the bridge to the soul. I'm going to help you to see how this thing that I have been pursuing, most of humanity has been unconsciously pursuing, to fill that hole that we all feel inside. I'm going to give you a glimpse of it. It's your task, your desire, your passion, if you so choose, to broaden that glimpse into full vision. That is what my keynote speaking is going to be about. Dr. Rita Louise, phenomenal powerhouse. Larry Flaxman, been on Discovery Channel, Ancient Aliens, and others. Lynette Marie, there's another keynote speaker. Jewelers, jewelers, gem smiths, uh, stones of all types, healing on every possible level, light therapy, sound therapy, best-selling authors everywhere, readers. It's going to be a very phenomenal event. You want more information about that, you can always contact me here in this form. Keith, I want more info. You can send me an inbox. You can contact Vic, Victoria Smith at Circle of Chi. That's Circle of QI. Be a part of this phenomenal, let's call, let's call it on purpose, a trend. The world is now taking spirituality up as a trend. Thank God. If we're going to have a trend, a Facebook challenge, I challenge you to show. <laughs> uh, let's see if there's any more of my announcements. Got to pay the bills. Center of Light Federation. My work is never to offend or upset, but to enlighten and awaken. Sometimes that rabbit hole that I will take you in, or that I find myself in often, you will end up with a handful of rabbit shit. Not pretty. 
but it is very beautiful in the ironic sense that it shows us the way when we discover that this particular thing is not the way. Hello, Janelle. Hello, Gina. Callan Renando. Carmen Shasha. Everyone, welcome to Center of Light. We're going to take a short pause. I'm going to bring my guest on shortly, Leela Harris, and we're going to be speaking about communicate with your heart. This is a new method of spirituality that has recently been introduced into my life thanks to Madeline, uh, uh, Madeline Newkirk, uh, the Dalian method. I don't know a lot about it. We just briefed over it when I interviewed Madeline. Madeline. Um, I like new arenas to play in. I like knowledge. I like power. I like responsibility because I get to wield that power for the greater good, which is for the greater of myself. And the bliss that lives inside of a person, when you use such things responsibly, can only come from the source of the greatest response ability. You feel me? Welcome to Center of Light. Going to be right back. I'm going to play this Lavender Soul song because of what transpired for me a few weeks ago that I briefly mentioned. As to why I said to Rajesh Patil, thank you very much. Knowing Keith, I'm going to do a presentation about all of that soon. I might even call it Angel of Love, Lavender Soul, my spiritual band coming out with a new album. In fact, Bernard and I had a writing session this past Monday comprised of members of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. Lavender Soul, Angel of Love. Enjoy. See you shortly.
Welcome back to Center of Light. I'm ready to get down to Center of Light Radio Business and make a spiritual sandwich. Tonight, my guest is Leela Harris, and we're speaking about communicate with your heart. I'm kind of having a moment right now. The, the last hour of my life until this moment has been quite overwhelming with new information that is hitting me on levels. And I have no doubt my guest tonight, Leela Harris, and I'm going to touch some of that just in the dialogue that is organically, naturally going to unfold. Let me tell you about my guest tonight, Miss Leela Harris. Leela Harris searched for over 15 years. Why is Keith pausing? She searched for over 15 years. That's a level of passion about something that she wants to master that applies to anyone. Leela Harris searched for over 15 years for a lasting solution to her ADHD, depression and anxiety. She championed the mountain, basically. She struggled to keep up with life, like having a relationship, doing laundry, getting out of bed, being motivated to keep a job, not to mention the intense emotions of chaotic thoughts she battled daily. She depended on psychiatric medications to function normally. In 2011, Leela finally found real answers. I'm digging this already. And healing, parentheses, not just theories or symptom relief, close parentheses, for her pain. She met a mystic. For those who don't know what a mystic is, Let's call this a professional daydreamer. <laughs> Not a, a spiritual daydreamer, someone who is mystical. Named Mada, Mada, I'm going to say Mada, Dalian, who created a healing modality, the Dalian theory, Dalian method, excuse me with the process of assessing and releasing repressed emotions and negative beliefs Leela got off medication and life changed dramatically she was shocked at what she discovered about herself and her life shocked in a good way as she un un unlearned so much of what she thought was true she since has been trained by Mada Dalian as a Dalian method facilitator and enjoys teachings others and enjoys teaching others how to empower themselves by expanding their consciousness. 
I don't mean the monkey in the head, their consciousness. When you can hear beyond your ears, when you can see beyond your eyes. You feel me? And looking within for answers. She specializes in sexual trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, inner child work, depression and anxiety, conditionings imprinted by religion, family and society, peers, governmental, familial, <laughs> that whole thing, that whole sandwich with rotten bread and things that you don't need to be ingesting. Although Leela is based in Kansas City, she is traveling to Memphis in August to team up with local owner of Art, Body, and Soul, Madeline Newkirk. Hi, Madeline, because I know you're here. I love you. <laughs> they are offering a special event August 23rd through August 25th at Art, Body, Soul. This event is titled Communicate With Your Heart, a workshop on the beauty of vulnerability. This workshop combines two powerful approaches, process art and the Dalian method. For more on my guest tonight, you can visit www.leelaharris.com. That's L-E-E-H-A-R-I-S. I want to add that extra R, dot com. Welcome to Center of Light, Leela. Hi, Keith. How are you, dear? I'm good. I first want to thank you for having me on your show, and I really appreciate this. You are welcome. I'm really interested in learning you, being with you, understanding your way of illuminating yourself first, and then others can pick up the breadcrumbs that <laughs> leaves behind. Tell me about communicate with your heart through the... Did I say that right? Is it Mada or Meda? Mada? Mada, yeah. Right, right. I know how some of the dialect works by doing this for so long. How do you communicate with your heart? Actually, first, let me ask you this. And then you can keep it all in the same marathon of your presentation your opening dialogue with me. I ask my guests always three questions. Well, there's always three segments of Center of Light. The intro, which is, what got you on this path? And the second would be the meat and potatoes of the interview. On the back side, I will ask you the third question, what it, which would be, what is God, Source, Jesus, Buddha, all that is good, all that is precious, all that means anything at all? And you give me your response. So what brought you to this space? And though I may have read it in the bio, I want to hear it, feel it, see it from you, and then follow up with how do you fall into your heart space? Well, how... I got to where I am is, well, honestly, it all feels accidental. <laughs> um, I look back over my life, and it makes sense in retrospect when I look back. Um, but I had no idea how things were going to unfold. And um, I guess a lot of my life, I couldn't really see very far ahead when I thought of the future anyways. So I was kind of taking things a day at a time for the longest time. And um, for reasons that you touched on in the bio. Uh, but I guess there was something in me that was always, I guess the word would be longing, longing for something. And I didn't know really what it was. And so ever since I was a child, it was kind of an experience of looking at the world and wondering, like, what does all this mean? Um, people look like they have a purpose and they're busy doing things, but I just wondered what all this meant. Like, why are we here? Why do we go to school? Why do we go to work? What's the point of it? So it was constantly wanting 
to understand. And but I, I felt so alone in those questions. So I, I just suppress that because no one I wasn't really exposed to anyone asking questions like that so I thought it was weird that I thought that everyone else knew something that I didn't um, but of course now I appreciate that ability to ask questions and inquire and and I think that's just what even though I suppress that I I mean I couldn't ignore it it just was it was like gnawing at me if that makes sense so when I started doing this work especially like you said in 2011 I met Mata I felt like finally I found something that meant something to me so so who is Mata is this a male female what is this not that you know I'm using I'm using labels but who is this person yeah um, sorry, there's a little bit of a lag. So if I see so who, that I'm so talking out of place. Who, who is Mada? Who is this person? Mada is, she's a woman. <laughs> and um, she's an enlightened mystic who... Uh, she has a special gift that she was born with that she could hear what people's thoughts were and true feelings were in their unconscious. So even as a child, she would hear what people would say, and then she would know what they were really fe feeling and thinking. But I guess, um, and she talks about this in her book, In Search of the Miraculous, but I think it was confusing for her, so she suppressed it. And then when she was an adult, she connected back to that ability. And she didn't know that it was useful until she started exploring it and realized that it had a lot to do with why people struggle, the things that she could hear and see in people's unconscious. And that's what led to her developing the Dalian method, because she started exploring this <clears throat> and how to help people use that to actually release what was keeping them stuck. So how through this so method do you so how through this method do you connect to your heart so we can all learn your way of tapping into the spiritual yeah. goat mother loved. Yeah. So what the Dalian method does, first it I just want to give some idea of what it is. It has three basic components. It one, it uses a certain way of breathing. Two, it utilizes out loud verbalization of our previously repressed thoughts and emotions. And three, it works with the body and the main energy points in the body and the chakras. So when I started using this method, I could, first of all, get in touch with what I was really feeling instead of just feeling like I just feel bad. I just feel anxious. But I couldn't, it was almost like submerged in underwater kind of feeling that I I didn't know how to allow myself to feel it, and I couldn't get in touch with what was really going on. And so what the Dalian Method did is it allowed me to connect exactly what, what was going on, the exact thought and the exact feeling that was going on inside to release it, to understand it, and how my heart started to open is by working with these things that were actually keeping my heart closed. So there was a lot of anger. There was a lot of hurt. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of feelings of just being a victim, being weak, not good enough, um, judgments about myself. 
how does it feel that you've released it? Well, it feels spacious <laughs> at this point in my life. I would say yeah. it feels very spacious yeah. because what we're doing with the Dalian method is, and this took me a long time to appreciate Keith, is I wasn't adding on or improving mm -hmm. myself. What I was doing is I was just extracting things out of my system, out of my energy so that I could connect with um, hence, the un, hence the unlearning. In other words, you we you know if you look we look at a sculpture, if they don't carve anything into being, they remove to reveal. Would that be an accurate description for you, dear? That's exactly how it feels. <laughs> yeah. I love it. It, it, and for me, it did take quite some years because I suppressed with the medication, and so I had to kind of go back through and work through all the things that I had used the medication to deal with because I hadn't dealt with them. So I had to go back through and all those feelings that normally I just kind of would reach for the pill or just would suppress because they scared me or they overwhelmed me. And that's why I, I was so grateful for the Dalian method because it's like I had something I could do with that and immediately feel better. So how do you, let's say, today, is, tomorrow is Friday, Thursday. Leela's going to wake up. She plants her feet on the floor and she says, Dear Lord, I'm grateful for today or whatever your ritual is. How does Leela connect to the heart? Is it a natural state of being now because you've been doing it so long by default and habit? Or do you go inside with a particular method and if you are doing it by default what would be a method that you can offer the listening audience to begin to fall into that space we're talking about well at this point in my life I don't try to connect to my heart um, I just <laughs> I love it I act, yeah I actually love it <laughs> connected I just stay connected to what's going on inside and I just try to stay as aware as possible and watchful of what's going on what is my mind doing what is how does it feel in my body um, and really the main practice I would say that, that I'm consistent with is just throughout the day I stop and I I kind of watch my breath and I just take these moments and I watch the breath going in and I watch the breath leave. So it's more of a letting go and just kind of falling into that silence. But over the years, I've done a lot of different things that helped me at that time. So, you know, and sometimes I'm sitting in meditation. Um, I try to do that on a daily basis. So I'm really going inward and connecting um, but really anything that helps people to, because meditation is very well known now, so um, people often have a hard time meditating or they struggle. So the other side of meditating and silence and connecting is also looking at what we're holding back and what we're holding in. So finding ways to express your emotions in a healthy way and express yourself, whether it's through movement, whether it's through your expression, it's through process art like we're doing in the workshop. The Dalian method is amazing in that as well. But that's what I would say because oftentimes what makes it difficult to connect to ourselves and just even connect to that to the heart or to stillness is that we're we have so much repressed stuff that accumulates so over time it becomes static frozen a wall that it seems impenetrable yes seems Can. because you proved it you you cracked the berlin wall you brought it down and you know that is the task you know it's it's a matter of wanting something like you for 15 years and in the there's there's an a knowing of 
once we achieve that milestone, years, 15 years, or however long it takes me or you or whoever the person may be, when you get to that 49 to 51%, 50%, you pretty much convicted in what's happening, that 51% tilt, it begins to integrate that the journey up this mountain was not in vain. Because when you can see the summit, <laughs> a blind man once said, it's not to climb Mount Everest does not require sight. It requires vision. So when we have that kind of vision as you, as myself, and other people, whoever you may be, when you have that one-pointed focus for expansion and betterment, it naturally becomes default and begins to happen. Is there a certain meditation you use or you just say, screw all the fundamental ideas. I'm just going to naturally breathe myself into a beautiful space and just release and let go and you find yourself there. Is there a particular ceremony, ritual, visualization that you use? No, because I try to not utilize my mind too much. And meditation is, for me, is helping letting go of the mind. And also is the ability to watch. So it's not about, for me, it's not about changing anything about myself or trying to shut down the mind or trying to get into a beautiful space. It's about being with whatever's happening and being able to allow myself to feel it fully and to watch, watch what the mind is doing. And what this does is it helps me disidentify. But I have also used the Dalian method for several years in order to get to the space. I did not start out like this at all. And I didn't really have any kind of vision when I started doing this work, even though I look back now and I see the thread, it was really just what obtained. <laughs> I just wanted to fix it and then just be happy and move on with my life. And then let me the ask you this. Let me ask love. you this. I, I, let me ask you this. This is really, really, really fucking cool. I love what you said. You said, I'm not trying to meditate and breathe to get into a beautiful space. I'm just trying to be with that which is so a beautiful space can come out of it by recognizing that which, as the observer, by recognizing that which is moving in my stream. So in other words, instead of <sighs> to bring me to a space beyond, quote, my problems, I want to experience that which is just present all the time. But through this meditation, I now can see so I can clean it via unlearning. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, well, it's... That's it's about acceptance of what is. Correct. To me, the, the deepest, um, most beautiful experience we can have, have because then there's, there's, and I've learned in my own process of self-discovery that even when I'm angry, even when I'm annoyed, everything has its purpose, Keith. And sometimes we immediately form a judgment that this is wrong or this is bad. Before we even try to look into it and explore it. So we have these judgments from our mind that, oh, this is not good because we've learned that. And that's one of the things I meant in my bio about what was let, shocking. Let me ask you this, that, dear. Let me ask you this. This is really important. I love what you said that when we get out of the good and the bad, would that per se apply to those who are not as conscious? And the reason I interrupt and I'm asking this question is because using discernment, reasoning, not logic, something that is what the mind has, what the gift that the mind is that says, this is not good. This is truly just not good. Mm -hmm. Would you say that would apply to those who are more conscious because they understand that the word good and bad is relatives, but they're using good and bad in this regard as it's simply not good. It's not of the highest order versus 
you know, living in the monkey mind and duality of good and bad, good and bad, right and wrong, all that kind of thing. What are your thoughts about using the mind as a tool versus it whipping your ass and using you to say what is truly good and what is truly bad? Um, well, first of all, acceptance does not mean I'm rationalizing something. Um, say, for example, I'm accepting jealousy. I'm using that example because people tend to feel uncomfortable with jealousy. Um, say I'm experiencing jealousy, accepting my jealousy, but not rationalizing and acting out on it and projecting it on the person I'm jealous with. Now, people who rationalize, what's happening is they don't accept it. That's why they need to rationalize. And that's often why they're acting on it. They don't accept themselves. So it's a lack of self-love. And how can we love other people if we don't accept these things about ourselves? How can we be communicating with our heart with others when we haven't brought that to ourselves? We don't accept our so-called darker areas. How can we deal with the world that's full of both conscious, unconscious, dark and light if we don't see that ourselves, we have those parts as well, right? So are you saying... No. It sounds like what you said is l rationalizing is a form of denial, really, because you want to run it through your process again, because in, in this holy instant, I can't just believe this is taking place. <laughs> yeah, because if I need to <laughs> rationalize, like, oh, oh, yeah, of course, I'm, you know, I should be blaming that person. They did something horrible to me, and you know what? They deserve it, blah, 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 blah. That's because something in me doesn't feel good about it, and I need the story to make me feel good. But if I'm bringing more acceptance towards it, I don't need the story and the projections to make me feel okay with something like anger or jealousy or blame. I just know, okay, I'm blaming. I'm not saying that it's always that easy, but that's what I mean. And the part where we say, you know what, this is wrong and this is right, there is that part in me that says, okay, that's not okay don't act on that, or I just made a mistake and that wasn't right, and then I apologize for it. So there is that part of me that feels responsible when I act on, on my unconscious. But that part isn't from the judgmental mind, it comes from something deeper inside me, a knowing inside me that has grown over the years. So of course that does... So it's not mind. really a, a right or wrong as if it's an all get out truth across the board. It's more of what is truly right, what is truly wrong for me. And the soul, the spirit within reverberates that and says, don't make this choice. You will not like that outcome. Keith Anthony Blanchard is Center of Light Radio with my guest, Leela Harrison. We're talking about to communicate with your heart. I'm really enjoying this dialogue. I'm learning new things things I've always known said differently, and the energy is different. The spin is energy, the timber, the tone, the frequency. It's very massaging. And since tonight we're speaking about communicating with the heart, as Leela, myself, and millions of other people, and I hope you're one of them, are communicating with your heart by simply dedicating, committing yourself to finding something of a greater possibility. Lavender Soul, what in the world am I looking for? Check out the lyrics.
that's behind it that I need more than what I have. I'm just not sure. Welcome back to the Center of Light, Yana Vites, Center of Light Federation. Is this some cliche bullshit nonsense, Keith? Might be. <laughs> Brings me a lot of joy. You a part of that. How do I know that? You hear, listening. You're not listening with your ears. You, it may seem that way. You are drinking this in like divine nectar with every fiber of your being. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, there's nothing you can do about it. Seeds are being dropped like a good farmer. Lavender Soul. Someone asked about the music. We're coming out with a new album. We're working on it now. <clears throat> we have three albums. Beautiful music comprised of Memphis Symphony Orchestra players. Wow. 
I'm grateful to be in their presence, as well as be in the presence, what a gift the present is, of my guest tonight on Center of Light Radio, Leela Harris, and we're talking about communicating with your heart. When you communicate with your heart, and Leela, I'm going to speak for her because I can't, because I know her enough, though I've never met her until an hour ago. When you communicate with your heart, like I always feel I am doing, and Lena, Leela would say she is doing, and as she and I are doing, you connect to a grid, a power grid, beyond you can possibly imagine if you've never experienced that. And you feel connected to something that has so much energy, so much purpose, so much place, all these wonderful things, and something inside feels illuminated. Would that be true for you, dear? Well, um, there, to a certain extent, yes. Um, but I find that really it's, I guess it, it's more of an, an inner focus that connects to like what you call the grid. And presence, where there's more presence in the body as well. And that brings a lot of energy. I would like to talk about some of the work, no, not some, the work you were doing in its different forms. Um, the sexual trauma, PTSD, inner child work, depression, mm -hmm. and anxiety. Is there anyone in particular that you would like to lead off with so our audience can learn more about you and what you are doing to help people in that situation, those situations? Well, I'll start with the trickiest one, post-traumatic stress disorder. And, and the reason I say it's tricky because I've experienced it and it does take time and patience to work with um, that kind of uh, trauma. And I personally found the Dalian method to be really helpful in my own life, in my own experience, in working with um, a lot of fear, a lot of fear and um, what I call just these experiences of getting frozen where we just suppress and we disconnect, um, also known as uh, disassociation as well. And a lot of what I, I was told was ADHD was actually just a symptom of post-traumatic stress, where I was just completely shut down and unable to be present because I was avoiding feeling something that was overwhelming. Let me ask you this, dear Lee. So what I do is I hope... Let me yeah. let me ask you this, please. ADD, ADHD, whatever one fits the model. Mm -hmm. I, I heard what you said as to why I kindly interrupted. That it's often related to this. Is there a form, for example, Albert Einstein? And they said he had this case of, and he wasn't interested in learning what the school had to teach. He was somewhere, like you said, somewhere else. Not focusing here because, at least to him, from what the picture that is painted, it's just not interesting. Is there two different forms? Or did he have his own bout with these things and that's kind of just being glazed over? I can't speak to him because I didn't meet him. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, is there a form of ADHD um, but, that's just uh, yeah, simply that, um, about I'm just not interested in this earthly plane? Does it have yeah, to always involve trauma? I think I understand what. You're... Yeah, no, no. Actually, because our education system is so um, narrowly focused, yeah, um, there's a, such a variation in how people live and what we're interested in and what we feel connected to and so yeah and I do see that part in myself as well and that is an important thing to discern is it something that's caused by trauma or have we just learned to judge it because it doesn't fit 
into society. And oftentimes it's a combination because judging ourselves is a form of trauma, especially when it's a part of who we are and our essence and our individuality and what gives us joy and we, we can't express ourselves and our energy fully. So yeah, um, that's, a, that's a very good point to make, to not necessarily just look at it as trauma in that, in that way. So yeah, it, it seems like it is a principle that exists neutrally. It's a reality that exists neutrally. Now what happens or what you do with the reality, be it trauma or be it simply, let's just use Albert Einstein as the example, or John Doe, it doesn't matter. I'm just not interested in that. So it would have come off up here, seem to fall under the same umbrella of 80, the same thing, because you're not here, you're there. Lovely. So what about some of the other work you do with anxiety, depression? I know, in fact, the very first presentation I've ever done with this whole thing three years ago was anxiety no more, I want my life back. And I was, I'm an expert in that field because I had it for two years. Oh my God. If there's a hell on earth, anxiety would be it. Let's talk about yeah. your work with anxiety, fear of the future, depression, mm -hmm. regurgitating, re ha hammering on the past. Mm -hmm. What is your work about that, dear? Well, first I want to say anxiety is basically another word for fear. It's yeah. fear. So, um, and when you think about what life involves on this planet, from this lifetime, from childhood, from before, um, maybe past lives, if people feel a connection to that, lots of things happen <laughs> that we don't really, that might be overwhelming. <clears throat> Even being born can be a really scary experience and can lead yes. an imprint of anxiety because you're just thrown out into this world out of the safety of the womb. So it's actually, in a way, part of our human condition, and we just need to work with it so we can understand our fears. And that's how I approach it to look at what our fears are. Um, it, is it specifically a fear of um, opinions? I know that one's one that I've worked through as well. Um, it could be anything. Um, Let me ask you any this, dear. Let me ask you this. We can be afraid all day of a this thing and of that thing and of this thing and of that thing. For me, via my experience, also through the definition of what anxiety really is. It's not only being afraid. It's being afraid of being afraid. Yeah. I know as a musician, as a metaphysician, the cycle, the circle, the law of physics, and acoustic energy. If I was to take a microphone as a musician, and put it in front of a speaker, it's going to create a feedback loop. Let's call that microphone fear. And when I put it to the speaker, that's fear of being afraid. I'm afraid of being afraid. And it creates that horrible noise we hear when things begin to feed back within itself. My fear is not only so great, it's so great I'm living in as a default measure. I'm scared of being scared. That's what causes that heart to feel like it's you have a heart attack because truly you are attacking your heart. Your own intelligence is being used against you. Would that be an accurate depiction of that? Well, I know it's been my experience that it's connected to the ego. So for sure, that, for that's sure. maybe another way of saying what you just said. Yeah, and um, what you said about being afraid of the fear is, yes, absolutely. Because then if we're not afraid of fear, then we allow ourselves to feel it and we don't need to run away from it. And then it works its way through. So yes, that's a really good point. What would you suggest 
for someone, since we're talking about mostly for now, anxiety, how can they move through it versus like saying, okay, I understand what Keith and Leela just said. I get it. I'm not interested in that shit. I want information. What can I do so I can ascend, move through these things that have me crippled? Yeah. So I, I really don't give information that can help with that kind of thing because information won't help someone release that kind of What would you fear. offer that would help I someone suggest, move through I the fear? I suggest the Dalian method. <laughs> I suggest the Dalian method. That's been my preference. Um, so, so would, would you give me the Dalian method? We talked about the Dalian method. What is it? Can you give it to me in a, yeah. you know, a summary? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I already talked about how it uses breathing and out loud verbal expression. So when we verbalize and we connect with the thought and the emotion and we verbalize, what happens, Keith, is that it releases it out of our system. The problem is, is that we experience these things and we, we suppress them. Like you said, fear of fear is one of those things. So when we are able to verbalize these things, they, they release out of the system. And then we start to go through the layers of what has accumulated to become really so painful and create so much suffering. And so the Dalian method, and really I can only say so much about it because it's so experiential. You just, you just know about it by experiencing it because it also doesn't use the rational mind. I knew there was a gold nugget in this interview today, <laughs> and you just gave it to me, sister. I have this way about me when something makes me mad, not playing victim, because I'm in a space of feeling this energy, I am going to regurgitate it right here, right now. It's not personal to whoever's around, and I will actually tell you, in my regurgitating and this vomiting of this experience, it's not about you. This is just what I'm doing to purge myself of this thing. Step out the way. It doesn't belong to you. I'm just shouting to the mountains. Is this kind of what you're saying? An aspect of the Dalian method could be? Absolutely free Thank you. and full expression of what <laughs> Thank you for is. the confirmation. Yeah. It makes my heart at ease. <laughs> yeah, just what is and being able to express that fully. Yeah. You know, and I've always said, and as you're saying now, when something happens to us, it's fresh and new. While it's still per potential energy and it still has some movement about it, if you are a magician, spiritualist, sorcerer meaning of the source god whatever words you choose to use you use your will while it's still potential energy so it doesn't amalgamate and begin to stick because over time these things unconsciously get stored in a file with cobwebs and dust and they cause us more havoc than we could possibly imagine yeah yeah yeah, absolutely. And the great thing about when we're releasing these things by acknowledging what is, is that we're not just getting rid of something. We're also learning about why it happened in the first place. And that possibility comes into play. So then we can get the wisdom from having gone through it. Because everything does happen with a purpose, which is a nice thing to say. <laughs> But to actually see what that purpose is, is a whole different thing in my experience. Like what it specifically is for us when we experience something. From the chat room, Lila, this is very important. This beautiful lady is beautiful and dear to me. She asked a question, or makes, she does ask a question. Jamie Lee Farrer asked a question. I am in the middle of parts and memory Therapy, the feed just moved, excuse me. I'm in the middle of parts and memory therapy for PTSD, for repressed trauma. Is it something like that? I've, I can't speak to that because 
I've not heard of that. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Hello, everyone who is just arriving. I appreciate you, Keith Anthony Blanchard, here with my guest on Center of Light, Leela Harris, and we are speaking about, ha, ah, speaking, communicate, communicate with your heart. It's about the passion and the sincerity. To me, Leela, passion is kind of like the fire. It's like the rolling up your sleeves, getting your fingers dirty, getting air, and like a mechanic. Sincerity is that soft part. Mm -hmm. I really mean it. This is important to me. So you got the fire. You got the guy with the hard penis and the woman who's ready to receive. And when you take that mother and that father energy and you become the master of it, a new birth between male and female aspects of ourselves begin to happen. That's what it's always felt like for me. One, as I expressed a moment ago, when I get mad about something that's just, it could be, it's all my creation, but I'm going to express my frustration because I don't want it to put its meat hooks in me. But yeah. also the, the feminine is gently treating the person by saying, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I'm learning via the Dalian method. Now that you know it. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to say, Keith, I've, I've discovered that anger is actually really beautiful, and I don't know where I would be without experiencing anger and frustration. I would not know what I know about my own boundaries, about knowing when something is off. I'm not saying all anger is about boundaries. It could be about our own stuff and a history, but either way, honoring our anger, frustration, annoyance, so-called negativity, is so important um, because often there's something there that's not um, that's not working well, and honoring those experiences is very important so that we can see what is not working well. Does that make yes. sense? Absolutely. The emotions tell us a lot. Yeah. It's so, part yeah, of I the. Like it's part of it. Throw it at people, but yeah, we need to. <laughs> It's part of the beautiful dance of an unfoldment, not only in one person's life, because there are eight point whatever billion people on this earth unfolding in their anger dances or their frustration dances or their jealousy dances, just like you. That's called the ascension and the well-being and the expansion of humanity. You're not special, Snowflake, <laughs> whoever you are. You know, everybody has their thing. And so when we see even the trouble, and I love this because even when we take this to individual, to a global level, even the pangs, the heart pangs in the world, the sufferings in the world, it's quite beautiful when we step out of the linear time and we step back into the esoteric and say, oh my God, from a cosmic point of view, everything is unfolding according to the plan. Because it's this constant blossoming and learning, turning within itself through the anger, through the war, through the this, through the that. Because I tell you, many years ago, when I was in that dark night of the soul, it sucked. It was dark. Hindsight, it was one of it was the most beautiful thing that ever could have possibly happened to shake my cage, to open me up to be present. So, in that way, in the Dalian method, I, I under, totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say, when I first started doing this work with the Dalian method, um, I think I started to say this earlier, and we went on to another subject, but really it was to get rid of pain. I had no, like, I wasn't aware of some larger <laughs> purpose. I didn't care about becoming more conscious. I wanted to stop feeling depressed. I wanted to stop feeling afraid. I wanted to stop feeling so insecure, and I just wanted to fix it all. And so I loved the Dalian method because I, when I would start, I would start a session feeling awful, and I would end many sessions feeling just completely different in such a short period of time. But then after doing that, 
and feeling better and feeling like I could function fine. I can easily get out of bed. I'm fairly happy. Not perfect, but I'm fairly happy. Um, what started to happen is that I could have just stopped doing the work and just move on and have a good life, but I found that I fell in love with the self-discovery and the experience of expanding my consciousness because I hadn't realized that was happening while I was working on things. I mind, I was fix them, but in the process, more conscious. And so anyone that uses the Dalian method regularly, you can't avoid not changing and not shifting your awareness hugely because it was created by an enlightened mystic. So it's not just to fix your problems. It's to evolve yourself spiritually while also working with your issues. And now I don't do these things to fix myself. I've let go of that fix it kind of. Yeah. Um, mentality yeah and i'm much more accepting of what is but i do the work just because i love like what am i going to discover next you know what am i going to learn about this habit or that experience or you know it i love really it because fun. i'm not trying to fix my humanness i'm trying to expand greater into my humanness love it uh yeah. dear would you give out any of your contacts or the dalian method contacts so people can learn more about and begin to practice what you're doing that might that's helping you so wonderfully that might help them we're going to go into a short commercial break and we're going to close the show okay do you want me to say it now or after yeah yeah give me give me your contacts for you and oh, okay. more information on the dalian method for those who might be interested yeah, so madadalian.com, M-A-D-A-D-A-L-I-A-N.com, leelaharris.com, and artbodysoulstudio.com, which is in Memphis. So you have a local facilitator, Madeline Newkirk. Yay. You can do this with a facilitator, with Mada, or on your own when you purchase the kit. What does the kit cost? Let's be real. It's, uh, if, I think you can download it for a 50 something dollars on Mata's site. The kit, I sell it for $80 personally, but you might find it cheaper on Mata's site. I say it. support Leela and buy it through her. That way you it's, serve in two things at one time. Yourself and supporting yeah. Leela for bringing this magic golden cookie to your awareness. Thank you, dude. That's lovely. Fifty dollars to change your life. That sounds like some freaking crazy ad. I like crazy. Einstein liked crazy. Jesus liked crazy. Tesla is freaking crazy. Get it? Crazy is the new normal. Keith Anthony Blanchard here. Yanava. You see me often post Yanava or Y N H. Why? Because I like living in, and it's not H. It's a V. So Yanava. Yah, God, will, John, heart, God, will. Na is the mind. Using the God-given ability of reasoning, not logic, not rationalizing, reasoning, discernment. Va is the backbone. Yanava, three sacred seed syllables of your authentic self. Everyone is Yanava at the level of soul. Yanava. That's what you are, and that's what you will ever be. We might change the, the, the title, how it sounds. Regardless, the truth is the truth, and the principle doesn't change. The three sacred seed syllables of yourself. Will, discernment, taking action, bringing about change in the world. It's time for a change. Lavender Soul, we're going to close off the show. Peace.
Welcome back to Center of Light Radio, and that's exactly what I want to do in this moment. My dear brother, Tony Meharry's wife, I'm not going to say she has cancer. The last thing you want to do is affirm an illness by talking about it. We're not going to say she has cancer. She's dealing with energy that the Western medical field calls cancer. How's that? Changes the whole game, doesn't it? What I'm asking you to do in this moment is close your eyes and open your heart space. Dwell there. Be there. Please don't go into, oh my God, please deliver this person from sin and, and Satan and all that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. 
don't desecrate something that is so sacred. What I'm asking you to do is join me in intention, prayer, and heart. And see, the highest good for Amber and everyone around her, that means you. She's part of your human family. Imbued with the highest good for the highest outcome for everyone. See her infulgent with light. Don't buy into the cancers. If you're trying to heal her, really you're trying to heal an aspect of yourself, but just see her and be with light. No judgment, just light. You don't have to know what she looks like. God is pretty intelligent, I'll tell you. Dwell in that space. Celebrate her life, not as if she's passed. Celebrate her life as that you're celebrating because she's still dwelling on this beautiful earth See what I'm saying? Totally different prayer. Total different prayer. That is true prayer. God is not going to do something for you. God says, all right, if I get 100,000 votes, I'll grant it. That's not how it works. It's you delivering yourself, involving an aspect of yourself to help illuminate a situation That is already beautiful. It is part of an unfoldment. But you do have a co-creative effort in seeing someone fully alive. Tony, blessings. Welcome back, dear. <laughs> yeah. We're at the top, we're at the bottom of the, the top of the, the bottom of the show, the bottom of the hour. Is there anything you would like to leave us with um, for tonight? Well, I just want to say, in order to communicate and connect with and from our hearts with others in the outside world, we first need to start with our own heart and connect with what's in our own heart, regardless of what we consider is happening is an enjoyable experience or uncomfortable and to be with what is and to be an acceptance in my own experience goes way further to authentically opening the heart than to trying to be somebody we're not or to try to be better than what we believe we are naturally so yeah I really enjoyed my time with you. I enjoyed it with you too, Keith. <laughs> I, I love your you. wisdom. I love, and you see, boy, pain can be a wisdom getter. <laughs> At least for me, it's given me the greatest gift. And someone in the room asked, is the Dalian method about self-healing? And I, from my chat with you, I kind of, paraphrase it and included your name with a tag that says, I think it's more about self-acceptance. Yeah, and that's what is the healing. And that is the healing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. That's please give out your please step. give out your contact information again so our audience can find more about you and what you're doing, dear. Absolutely. Thank you. Give, give out your contact again, please. I know there's oh, a delay. Now? Oh, sorry. I thought you meant no post it online. <laughs> no, no. Please give it up. Uh, um, so my website is leelaharris.com. Um, Madeline Newkirk is at Art, Body, and Soul in Memphis. And her website is uh, artbodysoulstudio.com. Third question. Last question, what is God to you? God, Jesus, Buddha, source, space, stillness, whatever you call it. What is that magic zone that makes us feel, oh my God, what is that to you? Um, that's evolved over time, my experience in that. 
um, at this point, it's it's very difficult to talk about, <laughs> not because it's too complicated, but it's very difficult to put into words at this point. I, we would have had a lot more words for you, like, a few years ago. Um, but there is just an experience that is felt, and that that how I describe that feeling changes. <clears throat> But it's just a feeling, and like I said earlier, it's from within. Thank you, dear. I really enjoyed my time. <laughs> You're welcome here anytime. Just keep us posted on what you're doing, any talks, any events. I'd be more than happy to announce and or get you back on Center of Light Radio. Oh, I would love that. Yes. Fantastic, everyone. Tonight, my guest, Leela Harris, communicate with your heart. I love that on her outro she talked about feeling it's a feeling you can call it what you like is that really important in that feeling is so much information it's encrypted it reconnects us to the source of who we are naturally there is no other work to do the Dalian method Check it out. Peace, love, and always live in the sacred light. Go back home.